Samantha got annual passes to the Aquarium of the Pacific. We love the aquarium. It's beautiful there. They've got so many animals. Samantha loves the ocean. If you become a member, you can get in any time. The member fees help support the aquarium and their conservation efforts, so it's great. These are the lorikeets. You can buy their food and then feed them. Super expensive, but it's worth it because like I said, any money you spend there goes to their conservation efforts. At some point, one of them got on my head and even though I was wearing a hat, I could still feel it on my head. We only did the outdoor exhibits because of the recent pandemic spike. We are definitely avoiding indoor spaces with crowds. So we went first thing in the morning when they first opened so that there would be the smallest crowd. And we only did the outdoor exhibits. We're pretty good at social distancing. I have an irrational fear of people. <laughs> so, so we're good at social distancing, but I like fish. This is the penguin exhibit, which was a huge favorite back when we used to go, when Sam was just super duper little. And there's this little cave, which I think younger kids really like, that little cave that you can crawl into. The stingrays are in one of the touch pools. You can touch them. You guys did not touch them. They kind of feel like an underwater suitcase. They're not all that scary. And they were jumping out of the water trying to get people to touch them. It was really funny to me. The stingrays seem to really like getting pet. They're like puppies. <laughs> They're like leathery, slimy puppies. Leathery, slimy, underwater puppies. <laughs> Yeah, next time we go, I think you guys will touch them. We were sort of just scoping stuff out. The seals do a show, but we didn't see the show because we were there first thing in the morning. This is the shark tank. They've got quite a few sharks in there. I like the shark. The sharks are cool and the tank just kind of looks like a screen until one of them goes right in front of you. It's a really big tank and you can see it from the side through the glass or you can look into it from the top over the top and look into that. That tank is really big. It's I think the biggest tank there. Here's the jellyfish. This is another touch pool. It's the moon jellies. And they also feel like slimy underwater suitcases. <laughs> they don't have the personality of the rays. They weren't jumping out to say hi. They were just kind of bloop blooping. And then after the aquarium, we went to this little beach that's got a park off to the side and it's very flat and there aren't any waves. So it's a very chill beach and we kind of had a lunch and then we were drawing in the sand. This one is one of my favorites. This was so clever because you used the hole for the shark's mouth. I'm so impressed. <laughs> He's such a cutie. And then you did your summer penguin. Is it based on the penguins that we had seen at the aquarium? I just <laughs> so we... thought of something beachy, but also like, I don't know. A penguin with a surfboard, of course. And then I sat down and did a watercolor. I like doing watercolors outdoors. I don't get to do it very often, but it's really fun to do watercolors out in the wild and kind of kind of cut yourself some slack and not stress too much about all of the little details and just try to get the colors and the light right. A lot of artists sketch out in the world. Just, you know, you learn about the world that way. If you're drawing things that you're seeing in person, you learn things about them that you wouldn't learn from a photograph. So it's good to do sometimes. And then on our way back to the car, we picked up some palm tree husks, stuck them in the car and brought them home. And I cut them up. I used some tin snips to do these curved lines. The tin snips, for some reason, wanted to do curved lines on these things. And then if I wanted to do straight lines or I needed to get through something kind of thicker and bulkier, I used these garden clippers. They had better leverage, <laughs> but they would only cut straight lines and they kind of shattered it a little bit more. I was cutting them up so that we could paint on them. The plan was to paint on them with Posca pens. I guess that's drain, draw, paint. But as I was cutting them up, I ended up having these sections that peeled away. And so we decided to use the peely sections as our inspiration. Samantha is using the peely section as a branch. What are you drawing? I'm drawing the lorikeets. Why'd you choose the lorikeets? Because 
they cool and I could add a little Ari in there. Oh yeah, you put in Ari. Who's Ari? Ari is Jaden Animation's pet bird or dog. <laughs> That's right, she calls Ari a dog. I was so confused the first time because I had missed out on all of the earlier videos where the joke started. So you're just confused? I was I was confused. I mean, not for super long because I have seen enough Jaden to understand her humor. The lorikeets are so colorful. Mm -hmm. What did you think of feeding the lorikeets? It was fun. They just felt kind of... Pokey? Yeah, at some point. The little, so like... the little claws on your hands. They don't have fluffy feet. <laughs> but the rest is fluffy. Mm -hmm. Fluffy, feathery. You're using Pasca pens on here? Mm -hmm. I think we probably should have done some experimenting with pre-treating these husks because the paint kind of wants to peel off. It's a little tricky. We did some lacquer on them when they were done just to try to preserve them, but probably we should have used some clear gesso or something underneath. But I like having the natural wood showing through. Your little lorikeets are saying hi to each other, mm -hmm. having a conversation. And I was just hanging out. They're saying, boy, it's nice here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. <laughs> I like the way you did the feathers with the dots. When I did the dots, I just tapped on them with my finger to make them a little bit less. Yeah. You were doing little bits of blending with the Poscas, and that's really hard to do. And you were doing with your finger, kind of spreading it out. But Poscas do tend to be very challenging to blend, and we don't have a ton of colors. They have a limited palette, and they're, they're hard to mix. I've mixed before, but I'm very fast. <laughs> uh if you're very, very fast, you can kind of blend them if you can scribble. I made some spots darker or lighter by just coloring on my finger, rubbing some on my other finger so that it's not too much, and then tapping it on the part I want to darken or lighten. That's really clever. Finger painting. <laughs> like a pro. Finger painting with Posca. <laughs> So I'm drawing the mountain yellow-legged frogs because one, I like frogs, and two, they have a really interesting story. So these little guys were on the brink of extinction. So scientists were trying to help them out, get them repopulated and all that. And it was kind of working for a while, so they decided to try and find a habitat to plop some eggs down. Yeah, they were getting them to reproduce in a couple of different zoos and, and aquariums, yeah. and they had some success. So yeah, they decided that they found a good habitat. So they put the frogs there and the little eggs in the, in the tadpoles, and then the forest burned down. They finally found a habitat happy home for these endangered frogs and relocated them to Northern California just before the bobcat fire. And when the fire hit, it destroyed that habitat that the scientists were so excited to have found. And so after the fire, the scientists went back out there and they gathered up the survivors, the surviving eggs and the surviving tadpoles, and they distributed them to a bunch of different aquariums and zoos. And now everybody's trying to save all of these frogs. And so far they're doing okay, but some of those frogs ended up at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And so their little rescue mission. <laughs> Gonna save the little frog babies. <laughs> so we found this reference picture that was just a frog poking its head out of the water. So I decided to draw that with this little one stripe thing. Yeah, I think that's such a clever use of the peely part of the palm. Yeah. So I just drew this little blobby frog dude and some bubbles and some plants. It really looks like he's coming out of the water. It's pretty impressive how well you achieved the look of that with Pascas. And then I added some sparkles because, you know, why not? This one's mine. So mine had a lot of peeling. It was a chunk that I pulled on and it just took all these stripes with it. And the stripes reminded me of the bamboo sharks that are in the petting tanks. These guys you can pet too, they're with the rays. They were kind of asleep. We were there really early in the morning and these guys were kind of asleep. They were like in a big pile, you remember that? Oh yeah. They were in a big pile in the middle of the pool and not really swimming around all that much. 
So I used all of the little stripies to do the stripies on the shark. Bamboo sharks are really pretty. They've got the stripes and some of them have the polka dots and then they've got the little fangs. They look like little vampires. <laughs> They're so cute and they've got so many fins <laughs> and I love them. So I'm just doing a little bit of shading and I painted the outside around them, the water. I wanted the natural palm husk color to be the shark because it's you know, so close to the shark's colors and I thought that would be really fun. So I just did a little bit of shading and a little bit of polka dots and a little bit of highlights and then painted the water around it. And I think it turned out quite lovely. <laughs> I'd used acrylic paint with paintbrush and Posca pens and alcohol markers. I'm a big believer in using the tool that makes the job the easiest. I decided I didn't like some of the bubbles, so I painted over them. There were yeah. kind of too many and I didn't like the dark blue ones at all. But anyway, yay, we went somewhere. Yay, it was fun. <laughs> yay, fish. Yay, ocean. Right? Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then we arted, because that's what we do. We go places and we art. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs>